Hi all. This is what my evolution simulation program looks like now. While collecting material, the interface has changed several times. I continue to add new features to the simulation and analyze the outcomes. I have added the change of day and night, but there's more on that in the next video. For those who are watching my channel for the first time, it is better to watch the beginning of this series. I will briefly describe what is happening here. This is a seed, and it contains an array of numbers. This is a genome. If the seed reaches the surface, it will begin to grow according to the genome. Dark cells are ordinary cells. Light cells are active offshoots where the growth occurs. Each cell consumes energy with every move. Also, it receives or does not receive energy from the sun. This depends on the position of the cell. If the tree has not died and has reached the age limit, it disappears and the offshoots turn into new seeds. They record the genome of the parent tree, but sometimes an error occurs. Is it good or bad? Natural selection will decide, and I'm just observing what happens. Today I will analyze the genome of the trees with a short life cycle. Sometimes I call them shrubs because they do not have time to reach the size of a full-fledged tree. Shrubs usually appear in early stages and disappear in later stages. Apparently, a short life cycle does not give any significant advantages. When a tree is born, a counter is set for it, with a number from 88 to 92. With each move, the counter goes down, and when it reaches zero, the tree dies of age. I have added a command to the genome to decrease this counter. That is, shrubs were planned to appear. Let's have a look at the genome of the shrubs that are now on the scene. The genome of this offshoot claims, if the height at which the offshoot is located is less than 30, nothing should be done. Only the counter of completed moves should be decreased by two units. Here is another offshoot with the same active gene. Now with each turn, the counter will decrease not by one, but by five units. And after 20 moves, the tree will die, leaving two seeds. Let's look at another shrub. In this case, the life cycle is actually equal to 12. Such species can be found in the field, and they all have the same gene. This is the gene number 7. And every species has a relation with the height at which the offshoot is located. They are all related, descended from the same common ancestor. By analyzing not one gene, but the entire plant genome, one can draw up a diagram of descendants. This is probably the way they do it in genetics. Here is another simulation where the proper shrubs are visible. But trees have also found another way to shorten their life cycle. This is the very beginning of the simulation. This species was randomly generated. Let's dig into its genome. Only two genes are involved here. An offshoot with an active gene 0 produces an offshoot upwards with the same active gene, and an offshoot to the side, which in the next step will fall off as a seed. Most of these seeds will not reach the ground. They will die in the next step. The whole cycle of the tree has taken 11 steps, and it already has 4 descendants. The life cycle is so short due to the fact that the shape of the shrub does not allow receiving enough energy from the sun. The shrub quickly dies from the lack of energy and only the timely scattering of seeds saves the situation. I've run it all in a sandbox. With the energy level received from the sun equal to 9, the shrub is able to maintain a population. At the level of 11, the shrub expands its range. Well, the height and life cycle of this species, unlike other short-lived ones, depends on the energy level. There is a video of another simulation where you can see the emergence of a similar shrub. 
only the seeds are thrown in both directions. They feel rather good and have even expanded their range. Here is another simulation. There is another option to shorten the life cycle. I call them leapers. Same as grass, there are genuine leapers and pseudo leapers. The mechanisms for their appearance are very simple. The tree begins to grow and sheds the only offshoot like a seed. According to the rules, if the plants do not have a single offshoot, it dies. The remaining seed falls to the ground and gives life to a new tree. I have spotted a tree in the field. Now, let's dig into its genome. This is a pseudo leaper. The top branch has a gene that says, if the height of the tree is greater than zero, meaning always, then the offshoot must fall off the tree and turn into a seed. And this is what happens. The original tree had other offshoots and it continues to grow, while the fallen seed will perish as it cannot reach the ground. As a result, the tree will grow full-fledged. It is energetically inefficient. If not for this branch, the plant would have died. I will get back to this branch a little later. When the life cycle of a plant is over, a pile of seeds will fall to the ground, fully covering the layer. They will prevent each other from growing. Let's go back to the very beginning. Imagine that the tree growth on the right is limited. Respectively, this offshoot will not appear. The tree only had one offshoot left, which turned into a seed, and a tree without offshoots dies. Here comes our leaper. Let's launch this tree in the sandbox and see how it will spread. And now, Let's talk about this side branch. I came across many plants without this branch, but if they are run separately, they die from the lack of energy. If you run them in a bunch, they survive because they do not allow each other to grow to the sizes incompatible with life. Such mutual assistance often occurs in simulations. By the way, do you see that some of the leapers move in the shape of a wave? This happens when they fall to the ground not at the same time, but in turn. Here is one of the simulations where you can see such a wave movement. This effect is connected with the fact that a growing branch scatters one seed every time it moves. The seeds fall sequentially, one after another, creating a wave effect as a result. I have noticed a mutant plant in the simulation. It does not grow up and I ran it in a separate sandbox. I have also found another interesting specimen. Here, among the descendants, every even descendant turns into a tree. Every odd one becomes a leaper. Let's take a look at the genome. The growth has begun. This offshoot will turn into a seed, provided that the life of the tree will last for more than 78 moves. The offshoot falls off and a new plant grows. In a new plant, the same offshoot falls off, but it is the last one here, since the proximity of the mother tree did not allow these cells to grow. However, the next descendant already has space. They will be alternating this way, one by one. Yet, in case of the tree grown from the top seed, this scenario will not be observed. When the seed falls down, the account of life is already reported, and the condition for the transformation of the offshoot into a seed will no longer be fulfilled. So, this tree has three development scenarios. A full-fledged seed-scattering tree, a full-fledged non-seed-scattering tree, and a shrub with a short life cycle. This concludes the review of the trees not willing to live happily ever after, spotted by me. In the next video, we will see how trees can adapt to the change of day and night, that is, to changes in solar activity. That's all for today. Bye everyone.
Mama, 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 Mama,